Hi there, it's Tracy, and I am going to show you step by step how to paint this blue daisy. I'm doing this on an 11 by 14 canvas. I'm going to use three different brushes, actually four brushes. I'll show you the fourth one later, but I'm using a three quarter flat, a four round brush, and a 12 bright. I'm going to first load my palette with neutral gray value five and white. And I am going to use that three quarter flat brush. So that big brush that's flat and it's perfect for filling up a background. Go ahead and double load your brush in both the gray and the white about equal amounts. And then paint on your canvas long sort of diagonal strokes that are going all different directions. Um, these colors are going to blend together to make this really pretty gray abstract background. My goal right here is to not mix the colors all the way. Um, I want this background to be abstract, sort of expressive. I like the look of the grays being kind of darker in some areas and lighter in other areas. It's super easy to do. You just fill it up with your two colors and um, by going kind of diagonally with your strokes, it blends the colors on the canvas. So you want to keep doing that until you fill your canvas up. Now, if you are having some flow issues with your paint, you can um, add just a tiny bit of water in your brush. So dip the brush in the water, but don't let it be dripping. Just a tiny bit of water um, on the bristles is fine. And that'll help with the flow of the brush um, of the paint if it doesn't seem to be smoothing out very well. And um, I'm only doing one layer here. I'm not doing a thick layer. It's a very thin layer and I'm not going to go over it again. This is going to be just the base of my painting, the background of the painting. Okay. So when you have this all filled up, then um, you can go ahead and paint the sides of your canvas. Um, when we do the whole background, sometimes you have some paint left on your palette and that's a perfect time to just go ahead and paint the sides of it with whatever paint um, colors are left on your palette. This video does not show me painting the sides. Um, so when you are done, you need to wait for this to completely dry before proceeding to the next step. And my video is going to pan ahead to the dry part and the next step. So I have a compass here and this is actually going to be set at about a one inch radius, which means that my circle is going to be about a two inch diameter. It doesn't have to be exact. You can find any circle that is relatively the same size as a two inch circle and you can trace it. You can trace a bottle cap or anything, a lid or something similar in size. So I'm going to go ahead and draw the, uh, the circle in the very center of my canvas and there's my circle. There's a little tiny hole right there, but actually, um, so don't press too hard with your, if you're using a pointed compass, but the paint is going to cover that little tiny um, dent of a hole. So we'll be fine. Okay. I have a cut out of a petal. Um, I actually traced a petal on a piece of cardboard and I cut it out. And this is going to allow us to um, not stress about drawing these daisy petals because um, they're all going to be relatively the same shape. So I'm going to start here at the top and I'm going to draw the first petal. I know it's hard to see because it's pencil on a gray background so it's extra hard to see um, but just bear with me here and I'll, I'll actually put up a picture right here of the finished drawing so you can look at it to see what I'm doing. So I trace the next petal opposite of it and um, I'm going to trace this one and it's going to be kind of close to it, but I want it to slightly overlap it. See how it kind of goes under the previous one. 
Um, so that's what I want to do. I want to pay attention to my spacing. I don't want them to be too close to where it's overcrowded, but I don't want it, it to, the petals to be too far away either. So make, um, make them slightly overlap each other, but they don't all have to slightly overlap each other, if that makes sense. So that one is slightly overlapping and maybe this one is not overlapping as much. Um, and keep in mind that they don't need to be perfectly spaced apart. When you look at um, these kind of flowers, um, the daisy or the gerbera daisy, the petals are um, relatively all the same shape, but the, the angles and the, the spacing between the petals um, can vary slightly if some of the petals are bent different directions. So we wanna kinda make it go for, make it look more natural as we're drawing this. So some are overlapping a little bit more than others, some are not. And that's what this, that's why tracing the petal makes it very easy to do this drawing. Um, on my blog post, I provide you a traceable of the entire daisy drawing. So if you don't want to do it this way, you can just print out the daisy and it's already optimized for an 11 by 14 canvas. You'll just tape the two papers together and it will fit right there on your canvas so you don't have to worry about the petals. I also provide the template for this petal. So if you wanna draw, if you like what I'm doing and tracing the petals, um, I provide you the exact um, drawing of my petal. So you can print that out as well. So what I'm doing with my eraser is, so we have those overlapping um, petals and there might be some lines still showing where they overlapped. So go ahead and use your eraser to just kind of touch that up a bit if you did some extra overlapping. So there's my daisy drawing and um, the next step we're gonna do is basically paint this daisy in. I'm gonna load my palette with ultra marine blue and light blue violet also titanium white so I have those three colors on my palette um, I'm also going to use a 12 bright brush load it in the water pat it dry this helps with the flow of the paint when you load it in the water first um, pat it dry so that it's not dripping everywhere we're gonna load it in the light blue violet and I'm gonna load the corner of the brush in ultramarine blue and we're gonna do some um, blending with this double load technique. So when you see when I start painting this first petal in, I get a two-toned look of that light blue with that dark blue. And that's what we wanna go for. We want um, a color variation in our petal so it's not just one solid color, it's this um, blue and violet, they're going to kind of mix together and do their thing. So um, you notice how I did the, I started with that blue on the corner, uh, which made the edge of the petal kind of darker. That wasn't really intentional. That's just how I did it. Um, but you'll see what's going to happen here. Each petal is going to be slightly different in um, the color variations of the dark and light blue. So go ahead and fill this petal in um, solid. So no gray showing through, but don't really try to get the blues to t blend together all the way. Okay, so we still have a little bit of dark blue in there with some light, lighter blue. So it makes it look like it's already got shading. Okay, uh, we're gonna go on to the next petal. Same thing, double load with the light blue violet and the ultra marine blue on the corner. Now, oh, I'm going to maybe add a little bit more ultramarine blue in here this time. And since this petal is overlapping this other one, it's um, slightly overlapping it, I want that color to be slightly different so that it stands out from being next to that other petal. So you can see by just by adding um, more ultramarine blue that time, it'll stand out. Okay, I'm gonna go on to the next petal, and this one I'm actually gonna put um, even more ultramarine blue in here, so it's even darker. So I, again, I'm doing the double load technique, loading it with the light blue violet, 
loading the corner uh, with the ultra blue and then going back and adding even more ultramarine blue in there. And you really want to do your best to fill in those lines nice and solid. Um, don't go outside of your lines that you drew. And um, the bright brush for me um, is very controllable filling these shapes in. Uh, you could actually do this with a round brush too. If you feel more comfortable filling in a curved shape with a round brush, you can do that. Um, so this one, um, again, I, I'm going to add a little bit more ultramarine blue in here um, just because I want it to stand out from the petal next to it. So um, my petals actually are gradually getting darker here, but I will, um, from the next petal, I'll probably make it lighter than this one, okay? And um, by now it looks like my colors are getting solid. There's still a little bit of a variation in there. Okay, so this petal is going to be lighter. I'm going to load it with the, the light blue violet, but maybe I'm not going to put any ultra, um, ultra blue in there so that it's a lot lighter than the one next to it. And this one is actually overlapping the darker petal that's to the left of it. And so I'm just going to do this technique of double loading and each petal gets kind of a different amount of the dark or the light blue and um, paying attention to overlapping so if this petal is overlapping I just want to make sure that um, I'm painting over it or if it's not overlapping I want to make sure I'm painting around the previous petal and making sure that I fill in the lines and also, it doesn't have to be 100% solid where the colors blend all the way together. It makes it look more interesting when the colors are not blended all the way together. All right, so here's my next petal. Um, kind of developing a pattern here of dark light, dark light. You can do that if you like that. Um, I think after this one, I kind of forced myself out of that pattern because I didn't want the look of dark light, dark light pattern. Um, so you don't have to do it that way. All right. And so I think I'm going to go silent here for just a little bit as I continue this technique of double loading both my blues and going around and filling it all of my petals in. Okay, now that I'm almost done with all of these petals, I need to make sure that you know we don't want to take a break now. We don't um, want it to dry all the way because that's going to be in our favor next. Um, next, I'm not going to rinse my brush off and I'm going to load it in this titanium white and I'm going to kind of drag it out on my palette. Essentially, it's mixing light blue violet with white to make a light blue. And so I'm going to call this light blue paint because I basically mix the white and the blue together to make light blue. So I'm going to use this light blue to add some flower texture to my flower. And I'm using the tip of the brush on the side now to create thinner strokes um, 
to add um, some flower texture to our flower. We're not going for realism here. We're just kind of making it look like um, these petals have maybe some highlights on them. And so using the brush on the side to create the thinner stroke, just create a few, two, three strokes of these uh, light blue lines. I'm going to do it on all the petals, even the darker ones. Um, I, I did them on the lighter ones first. And then you can even take it um, with the light blue and you can use some of the light blue to outline some of the edges of your flowers um, to make it look like maybe the highlight is right there on the edge. And so um, it's blending with colors that are not dry below it. So that's why it's important to not let your painting dry all the way yet because it's helpful with blending the colors below it. So when you do the light blue on the darker ones, um, just press very, very lightly so that um, it doesn't overwhelm it and turn it into a light blue petal because we don't want that to happen. Just a few light blue lines on um, the dark petals um, will do the trick here. And I'm just going and outlining that petal. That petal got kind of thick, but that worked in our favor because not all the petals have to be the same exact thickness. They can be different. Okay, so we are done with this portion of the flower. So super simple, um, easy. You could go back and you could render it even further, but I'm not. I'm keeping this painting very simple. And I'm going to move on to the center part of the flower. Actually, I'm going to do one more thing to the base of the petals. Um, so this is a four round brush. I'm going to um, add some water to my brush and kind of um, add a little bit to that ultramarine blue just to thin it out a bit. And I'm going to load my round brush in that ultra blue, so that darker blue color. And so the base of all my petals um, is a darker blue color. And to achieve that effect, I'm just going to take my round brush and I'm going to paint uh, little short lines of this dark blue on the base of all of the petals. So I'm just painting short strokes of lines that are pretty much radiating around this circle that I drew. And it's on the base of every single petal. So this is going to create some really pretty contrast, especially when we paint the center part of the flower. Okay, so just go ahead and do that all around your circle. And they're not, it's not a very thick base. I'd say maybe it's a quarter inch thick that I'm going. I'm going like, I'm making little lines that are about a quarter inch long. Okay, and so just keep going. Um, using just the tip of your round brush. I know my hand is in the way. It'll get out of the way soon so you can see what I'm doing here. So that dark blue creates a nice um, darker color for the base of all of the petals. Okay, um, and then if you wanted it to go even darker, you can go back and you can add a second layer of the ultra blue and it'll make it even darker. So that's what I'm doing here. I'm just adding um, a second layer over the first layer that I did. Um, I guess one tip I can give you with this technique is pressing kind of firm at first at the very base of the petal and then as you release the brush it kind of wisps away and you release the pressure so the line starts out kind of thick and then it gets kind of thin. Okay. The next thing we're going to do is paint our circle. So this is uh, this was a little tricky because my circle I couldn't see my original circle anymore. So I had to kind of guesstimate my circle. This is Mars Black and I'm still using that four round brush. And basically with the Mars Black, I'm going to paint the entire circle black. So just fill it in the best you can. All of it's black. Um, don't paint over any of the the base of the flower. So we, 
we did the blue lines for the base of the flowers don't paint it don't paint over the blue part so try to go um, cover all of any of the gray that's still showing through the canvas so you want to get that circle to cover all of that but try not to cover any of the blue petal parts When you are done with this black circle, you need to wait for it to dry. We're going to do some texture on it next, and the texture will not work if this black is wet. So um, take a break or dry your painting and come back. Um, this is a, I call it a scruffy brush. It's um, a, a bristle brush. It's a brush that has the thick um, bristles and I'm dipping it in titanium white and you can see what I'm doing here I'm dabbing it and just by dabbing that titanium white it's creating this texture in the center of the flower so you want to just dab your brush um, try to make it a little more concentrated in the center um, and not as concentrated um, on the outer part of the circle Okay, so I'm just dabbing very lightly on the outer part. Um, so it's kind of slowly on the outer part. Um, but the center part, um, there's more of the dots. Okay, um, if you don't have one of these bristle brushes, uh, you could use a round brush and paint all those little dots. It might take a lot of time to do that. Um, you might be able to use a Q-tip, but you would get a different kind of texture. Um, not the really thin circles, you would get really thick th circles. Um, or you can um, get any kind of brush that seems kind of old and the bristles are all straight everywhere. Um, and you can try that to dab it on to create that texture. Okay. Um, and so after that, we're going to do a yellow ring around our circle. So we're going to load our palette in um, with primary yellow and I'm going to use my round brush for this and you could use the back handle of your brush if you'd like. So um, just dab the, the handle and you can stamp all those circles. Um, I find that works for a little bit and then the circles just get kind of uh, uneven and it gets kind of tedious so um, I ended up turning it back over to use my bristles and you're just painting a yellow uh, ring of dots on the um, diameter of the circle the circumference of the circle <clears throat> and these dots are um, kind of in clusters you'll see me do that do multiple rows of those circles of the little dots so just paint little dots and you'll see that it creates some really pretty contrast with the blue and the yellow so keep going keep painting the little yellow dots all the way around um, multiple um, probably two rows maybe but they're more they're more like in clusters um, and it creates this really pretty texture in the center of the flower. So that is the last step that I have for this really simple blue daisy painting. Um, I'm going to go silent as I finish these last few dots, but I thank you for watching this painting tutorial. I hope that you enjoyed painting a blue daisy with me too. Thanks for watching.